Hello, podcast listeners. Gitter Dunham here. And don't forget me, Brian Dude Man. Do you know what Buffalo really needs? More podcasts. And luckily for you, Heather and I have decided to make a brand new podcast. This one's going to have more of a heavy focus on musicians. We'll still have writers, actors, directors, but this one's going to have more of a focus on musicians. Uh, is there anything else, Heather? What are you guys doing down there? Uh, nothing. Shh. You better not be podcasting. No, of course not. I think she bought it. Oh, one more thing. Don't tell mom about this podcast. Hello, podcast listeners. Heather Dunham here. Woo, podcast party! Shh, dude, man, quiet. Mom's asleep. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. I'll try to keep it down. Anyway, hello, podcast listeners. Uh, You're listening to the Don't Tell Mom About This Podcast podcast. I'm your co-host, Heather Dunham. I am your other podcast host, Brian Dudeman. And on today's episode of Don't Tell Mom About This Podcast, we have... Paul Fanara. And Courtney Chime. And what do you guys do? Like, what's your titles? Um, let's see. I am a photographer. I, um, I'm a filmmaker. I'm an actor. I'm a writer. I'm a director. Um, and my actual career is in IT. I'm a singer, dancer, coach, and my real job is a math teacher. Cool. So why don't we keep things moving along here and get to our first segment of the show? Is it fan mail time? Yes, it most certainly is. Uh, For our first-time listeners, we have a segment on this show called Fan Mail. The way it works is we'll tell you uh, what guests we have on our show each week. We'll ask you, the listener, to send us questions either through Instagram, uh, which is Don't Tell Mom About This, or our Facebook, Don't Tell Mom About This Podcast. You'll send in your questions, we'll ask them here on the show, and the guest will answer. So without further ado, here's the first question. All right, so this first question comes from Pat out in East Aurora. He says... Paul, um, which comes more naturally to you, man, uh, photography or uh, film? Um, well, photography probably, just because I've been doing it for so much uh, longer. Um, I've been a professional photographer for over a decade. Um, the film stuff is something that I've just recently gotten into. Um, that was kind of spurred on by my interest in being in the 48-hour the film project, which we do every year, and uh, that's a whole lot of fun. Um, but I'm definitely looking to do more film and more things with film. Courtney, what band are you in? <laughs> Well, I actually sing in a couple different bands. I sing with a classic rock band called Midnight Recovery. We have like 47 dates booked for the year, which is out of control. Um, I also sing with a four-piece, sort of like a jazz quartet, where we take pop songs and rock songs, and we kind of swing them and turn them jazzy, and that's called The Bee's Knees. And then I sing in an acoustic duo with my uh, girl crush, Sarah Rogers, and the band's name is Girl Crush. Paul, next question. Um, so writer, director of cinematography, obviously I switch one come more naturally. You said photography. Uh, so what's your stage process? Like what's your staging process for when it comes to film? Um, I think I found my most successful approach is to um, really kind of nail down the script and what we want happening um, throughout the the film and the scenes. Um, And then kind of approach each scene on a shot by shot basis, create a shot list, uh, figure out what we're going to need for each scene, uh, detail out a list of the things that we're going to need as far as the the actors, the props, uh, the location, um, how we want things set up. Um, and then we move from there as far as uh, blocking it out, rehearsing it, and, and making sure that we get everything set. So, Courtney, you did dance a lot. Um, I, too, am a dancer. I did jazz, tap, and uh, theatrical. So I'm wondering what your flavors of dance are. Uh, so similar to you, growing up, um, I, I danced since I was four uh, at a studio out of Niagara Falls and I did the whole tap jazz ballet everything uh, back then my I probably would have said my favorite was acrobatics um, my body does not allow me to do that anymore so uh, I still am a dance teacher but I primarily teach musical theater dance um, and jazz are the two styles that I, I teach at my studio um, I currently p- continue to perform uh, in a Bollywood company called uh, Devi Bollywood Performing Arts. That's something that I got into 
probably in the last five years, I joined this company and we've been performing at all different types of events, weddings. Um, we've put on our own shows. Uh, and I also do aerial arts. So I do trapeze aerial dancing as well. So I try to stay active in dancing. It's just in a different realm than I grew up dancing. Oh, that's very well-rounded. I know um, my theatrical uh, dance experience is really the only thing I've had to apply to acting because I am not trained in acting at all, but I took a lot of things that I learned from theatrical and put that in. Paul, um, question. I know that we've worked a lot together, so I know that you know I'm very much into comedy. You're area of comfortability like what do you feel most what gravitates you towards film is it comedy horror like action like what what is it um i I don't know if there's any one genre that i gravitate towards um we've had a lot of success with uh more dramatic but we've done a lot of films together you and i have um that have been yeah that have been comedy based um we used to work with um, a company called Welcome to Lovejoy and do uh, sketch comedy. Um, and we did actually a lot of really funny stuff <laughs> with that sketch comedy. And, and that was a lot of fun. Um, but when I'm writing, I mean, if I'm if I'm creating something from scratch and I'm writing, it's usually something more along uh, dramatic, um, but with, you know, hints of comedy added into it. Um, I think comedy is a very difficult genre if you're... If you're doing it right, it's great, but it's really hard to do it right. So something unique to you guys is being a couple and also in the industry. I'm curious how the work-life balance works out with all the crazy things that get thrown at you in the arts. Well, I have a tendency to rope him into things and volunteer him for things. Um, Because I sing so often or perform with different entities, um, a lot of times, you know, people are like, oh, we need... You know, we really want to, you know, make video the show or we really need some content. And I'm like, well, I kind of got a guy that follows me to all these things anyways, who happens to have a camera and experience. So uh, I usually kind of rope him into sort of videoing and taking pictures of all the different things that I do and audio capture and voiceover work that I have to do sometimes. So, um, Sometimes it gets brought home, but that's also where we get a lot of inspiration, too. And we bounce ideas off of each other. And sometimes I veto his ideas because he thinks they're really funny. And I'm like, I don't understand any of what you're thinking. But um, (laughs) but we also work really well together in the fact that, like, he'll ask my opinion on things. And I am never shy to give my opinion on things. So, (laughs) Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything i mean you know it's uh it's part of creative inspiration courtney is uh has been my muse for a very long time um whether it's shooting things or doing silly buffalo bills parody videos or you know whatever i i know that there's nothing i can throw at her that she won't excel with um so you know as far as that life work balance you know when when the work is part of life it's just it all seems to balance so we just have fun with it that's fantastic that you have overlapping interests like that because I know I've tried to drag my partners into my projects before and they're just like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll go away then. It's one of those things that we talked about at the beginning of our relationship. We have, um, we don't just have compatible interests, we have complementary interests yes. where there's things that I can do that she doesn't, but there's things that she does that I can make use of. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that about does it for fan mail. Uh, Guys, if you want your questions asked or if you want to know ahead of time which guests we'll have on, please follow us on social media. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with more. And we're back. Thanks again, Blue Lagoon Studios, for letting us use your place. We are here with Paul and Courtney. Uh, We would like to thank you again for taking the time to be on our show. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. It's been fun. So we're going to jump into our second segment of the night, and this is called Don't Tell Mom About This Segment. We thought it'd be fun if every time we had an actor on that we did some sort of Black Mirror type episodic series. Uh, Each episode will have a different theme and we'll play different characters, but tonight's episode is called Mademoiselle's Magic Tricks and Tips Shop. Fade in, interior, car, night. 
Dave, 40 years, balded, polo tucked in purple shirt, jeans sitting in the driver's seat, takes a puff of a cigarette, <sighs> and Chrissy, long, radiant, blonde hair, padded down the middle, well dressed, sitting in the passenger seat, finishes her 16 ounce Red Bull. Are you sure about this? We can go home and try again. Mm. While that sounds tempting, I'm gonna pass. I think it's worth a shot to try here. All right, well, you better be right about this. Dave takes the keys out of the ignition and places them in his jacket coat pocket. Chrissy opens up the car door and heads out. Exterior, Mademoiselle's Magic Tricks and Tip Shop. Night. Teenagers dressed in Harry Potter cloaks are carrying a tiny wand and standing in line as security pats each one of them down and checks for their IDs. Is this normal? Uh, no. It's usually more dead than this. Hey, move it or lose it, Gramps. Some of us have been here for two hours. What is going on here? Um, excuse me. You don't know? It's Harry Potter Day? Duh. Yeah, all the magic kits are off 50% today. Also, Daniel Radcliffe is here to sign autographs. Dave, of all the days for you to come here? Don't worry, I've got this. Oh my god, is that Emma Watson? All the geeks except for one leave in embarrassment. You know, that wasn't very nice. Yeah, what do you care? Now you're first in line, right? Security guard lets in geek one, Dave and Chrissy. Interior, Mademoiselle's Magic Tricks and Tip Shop Night. The store is decked out in magical gear. There is about a hundred bucks across a wall of shelves. There is portion, potions, skulls, and a large purple curtain that leads to the back. Dave goes to the cash register and waits for a store clerk. Uh, hello, is Mademoiselle in? We need to speak to her. It's urgent. A voice from beyond the curtain begins to speak. Hello, greetings. Mademoiselle is in. Mademoiselle, 29, long, curly, brunette hair, tucked in a green turban, dressed in a black, red, and purple dress, comes out from beyond the purple curtain. How may I help you young folks today? Uh, Erica? Is, is that you? No, the name is Mademoiselle. I don't know this Erika. You guys follow me into the back? I'll tell you things. Mademoiselle brings out Dave and Chrissy to the back. Okay, what can I do for you? Well, you see, Doc, it's, um... Well, Dave and I are having trouble with... I can't get her pregnant. Oh, I see. Please take a seat. Dave and Chrissy sit next to each other. Mademoiselle sits in front of them, looking at her crystal ball. Yeah, we've been trying for months. I just can't seem to land anything. It's very frustrating, you know? Mm Mmm. Well, Mademoiselle is here. I might be able to help you fix that. Erica, I know it's you. You can drop the act already. What are you talking about? It's a little hard. I mean, difficult. I can't talk about this when you're cosplaying. Mademoiselle takes off her turban and reels herself as Erica. Yeah, okay, you win, Uncle Dave. It's just part of the job, you know? Oh my god, you're just a kid! You guys want my help or not? Well, yes, of course! I I'm sorry, I didn't mean any disrespect. Erica writes out a prescription on a blank piece of paper. You're gonna want to take this. Take two at night, one on the morning. After that, you should be good at night. Also... I wrote a book recommendation. Oh my god, thank you. You're a lifesaver. Chrissy and Dave push their chairs back and stand up. Can stand up. Uh, Erica, just do me a favor, okay? Don't tell your mom about this. Fade out. And we have a special treat for you. Uh, Old Time Buffalo is going to be performed by Courtney Live. They're breaking old records on the shelf. Can you imagine if there were fans in the ralph? Today's bills have got the same soul, just like that old time buffalo. They're trying to take us to the Super Bowl. Allen and Diggs have got the magic on the floor. We won the East and we're looking for more, just like that old time buffalo. 
just like that old time buffalo. That winning spirit that fills the soul. This team is bringing back feelings of old, like that old time buffalo. That was beautiful. <laughs> wow, thanks everyone. <laughs> We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back with more. And we're back. A huge thanks again to Blue Lagoon Studios for letting us use your place, and we would like to thank our guests tonight for stopping by. Before we close out, we'd like to get your final thoughts on if you wouldn't mind plugging your social media so people know where to find you. Sure. Um, so I have a performer page that people are more than uh, welcome to follow. It is Courtney Chime. Uh, Courtney without a U and Chime with a Y. Um, and there you'll see updates when all of my bands, Midnight Recovery, The Bee's Knees, Girl Crush are performing. I also post um, some things if you have younger children and you're listening and you might want to go to a princess party. I do work for A Dream is a Wish Entertainment and that uh, we do princess parties. Um, and if your child wants to get into singing, please check out Matt's music in North Tonawanda. And I work with the vocal performance team there. So lots of things to take a look at on Facebook. Same handle on Instagram, Courtney Chime. And uh, my social media handle is living in the buff with two Fs. Um, Living in the Buff Art Media is the name of the photography business. We also do uh, commercial video. Um, so if you have an event coming up, you need uh, marketing photos for your business, um, performance video, audio. Um, that's the things that we specialize in. All right. That about does it for tonight's episode. I've been Heather. And I've been Dude Man. We just have one final thing to say before we go. Shh. Mom's the word. Thank you for listening to the Don't Tell Mom About This podcast. I've been Gitter Dunham. And I've been Brian Dudeman here live in the Blue Lagoon Studios. You guys, remember we are on iTunes, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Please share this with all your friends and family. It would really help this podcast out. And guys, remember, we release these episodes every week, so please, next week, check back in, and we will have a brand spanking new episode for you. Until next time, shh, don't, don't tell, tell mom about, about this, this podcast. podcast.